Hey guys, I'm Steph. And I'm Richard. Question from K-pop. I have a question. I'm 13 years old and I live in Denmark and I want to move to Korea when I'm 18 years old and I want to be a singer and I have blue eyes and really tall. So if I move to Korea and become a singer, will I look normal or will people think I'm crazy or weird? How many non-Korean K-pop singers are there? Okay, there's not many non-Korean K-pop singers, but there are a lot of K-pop singers who were not born in Korea. Wouldn't you say that if you want to be a K-pop star, whether you're Korean or not Korean, that you would need to be totally 100% fluent in Korean? I think you'd need to be totally fluent in Korean, and I also think that you'd have to like spend significant time in Korea to understand the Korean culture. Not only do you have to know the language, but you have to know like innuendo in the language and how to make humor with the language and all that other stuff that we take for granted. You have to be able to have it to a higher level, like perfectly fluent. And I get the obsession with K-pop. It's very attractive. People like it. It's not my cup of tea, but it's fine. It's cool. I just don't understand why you have to move to Korea to be a singer. Like, can't you just be a singer wherever you are? It's the dream though, for many people. I know two people of non-Asian origin who have actually become K-pop singers. Can you name one of them? Busker Busker. Yes, there's the guy from Busker Busker and there's one other one. His name's Chad Future. Chad Future is a K-pop singer. Isn't he in Canada? I think he's from the US. And he tried to be a singer and he was like singing in Nick from NSYNC, like tried to make a, not Nick. Was it Lance? I don't know. Somebody tried to make a K-pop group, and er, not a K-pop group, an actual pop group in the US and it flopped. And so this guy paid a lot of money to go over to Korea and try to make it there. Mackie's distracting me. Mackie got her first ever pedicure. Oh, pedicure. And she's got- Oh, Maggie. Oh, you look like a K-pop star with these sparkly purple nail polish. I gotta say, Chad Future is not perfectly fluent and that's one of his big criticisms. Really? Yeah, well, because he's fine with the English lines, but they almost always stick some Korean guy in there because when he comes to actually speak Korean, he's kind of rough around the edges. Well, how did he become a K-pop star? Was he writing in Korean the lyrics and then, or is he more of a guy who makes the music and puts the lyrics on after? I don't know. We're talking about Chad Future. Chad Future, who are you? Korea is very ethnocentric when it comes to this sort of thing, and so they like seeing their own people in their music. I don't think they're opposed to having a non-Korean, like say a blonde hair, blue eyed, whether you're a boy or girl, but if you don't speak Korean, there's no way they're gonna take you. And then we're talking, like she said earlier, fluent Korean, like perfect, perfect Korean. They don't necessarily care otherwise, but if you don't speak Korean, you're out. Especially if you want to be a singer. You are going to be super busy if you are a K-pop, if you're a successful K-pop singer because they want you every day, whether you're performing or you're going to be on TV doing something else or some variety show or an interview or the news or on radio or some public appearance. Every day, all day, your schedule is going to be packed and you're going to be speaking Korean totally 100% all the time. I would think they would appreciate if you speak English, but they're not going to take you if you speak English but not Korean or if your Korean's only so-so because it's Korean people that you really are appeasing first and then the international community comes after that, whether you think it's that way or not. And another thing that I will say is the life of a K-pop star is not always the best. You can see this on a lot of the reality shows. A lot of times if they're in a K-pop group, they all live in a group apartment together. In some cases you see like, they're just like, oh my gosh, I get to eat meat today and not ramen noodles. Why, because they usually eat ramen noodles? When they're first starting off, they're poor because they split all the money amongst all the members. Yeah, but if they're just starting off and they get signed by a label, then they're not poor, right? No, they're still kind of poor. Unless you become really big. And aren't they not allowed to date or any of that sort of thing either? That's changed. That's that's changed a lot, but you still have a lot of like pressure put on you. And if you do date, for example, Sully of FX just got caught and there was a rumor maybe she was dating this guy, maybe she wasn't dating this guy. And she actually has just announced she doesn't want to be doing anything entertainment related for a while because because she's just physically ill and mentally stressed from all the pressure that's being put on her as a K-pop star. It's not all like roses and butterflies and balloons, people. This is my recommendation. If you really want to be a singer in Korea, if you really want to go to Korea and be a singer, go to Korea, something else, and become a singer. I actually know people who go and sing in Hongdae and sing in the local bars and things like that as more or less their singer in a band or a group and you still make some income, you still go out, you still perform, you still have Korean girls going, oh my gosh, you're so cute, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's but just at a smaller level. 
it's at a smaller level and you get to do it and make your own schedule as you want. I agree with that 100%. The only thing I would add is you must be a really fluent Korean speaker. Like we said before, you gotta go to Korea and learn Korean hardcore, intense, every day, all day for like six months or eight months or 12 months or something like that. You're studying Korean before you get there, that's great. If you have a private Korean person as a tutor, that's going to help you even more, but you're still gonna need that, I wouldn't you say at least a year, if not two or three years to become fluent? No, not if you're singing Western hits at a small little club in Hongdae. I'm not talking about singing, I'm talking about speaking Korean. Yes, but this has to do with being a performer in Korea. Yeah, but if you're just a person who doesn't speak Korean, you can go to Hongdae all day, but you know what that scene is like. It's not that big. So you'll get to sing, but you're never gonna be a K-pop star if you don't have that Korean element that's so almost perfect that Koreans can go, wow, where did you learn your Korean? That's going to be your ticket in on top of the fact that you need to be a really good singer. Well True, I'm not disagreeing with that. If you want to sing K-pop and you want to sing K-pop in that kind of a venue, you need to learn Korean in order if you want to sing Korean music. However, I know plenty of people who have become singers and have done singing things without speaking Korean very fluently. But how successful are they? That's the part you're not letting on, I think. It's just more of a casual thing for fun. My recommendation would be to set up a camera, make YouTube videos where you're speaking Korean and singing in Korean and practicing Korean Korean that way and showing your sincere intent, especially if you are 13 years old, like you said, five years from now, if you're practicing Korean now and you're singing in Korean and you're showing your intent, you're making YouTube videos for five years, you could possibly go to Korea and be like, hey, check out my YouTube channel. I've been speaking Korean for five years. Like that would be the ticket. But is that a realistic goal? I don't know. I don't know your situation. I don't, you know, I don't know how good of a singer you are, how good your Korean language. I wish you the best of luck. I hope you can pull it off. It's not really an easy thing to become a K-pop singer or star if you're not Korean. Now, if you're Korean American or you're Korean European or you're Korean like Australian. And you speak Korean, then. You know, it's a lot easier. You have a much more likely chance of possibly making it, possibly getting your name out there, getting your songs heard or viewed if they're on YouTube. If you're not of Korean ethnicity at all, it's still possible, but you need that Korean element. Yeah, so that's it for today's Life in Korea. Yeah, click the blog post right here for more information if you're interested in K-pop or becoming a K-pop star. If you have a question for us, <laughs> drop a note in the YouTube comments on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash hollyback, or in the comment section on our blog, hollyback.com. And like this video, give it a big thumbs up, and subscribe, you guys, for Asian drama and Life in Korea videos. That's it for today's Life in Korea. Experience, Experience it! Do you think we answered the question? I don't know. But it, it's just one of those questions that's so hard to answer. It's like... It is so hard to become a K-pop star, even for Korean people.